What's going on, everybody out there? This is your boy Marlon Ballard with the Love to Laugh podcast. I got a special guest, one of my favorite new artists in the game, man. Give it up for Stimulator Jones, y'all. Yeah, my man. Man, hey, man, it's great to have you on my show, man. It's an honor. Like, you're a very talented dude, man, and I really appreciate your music. You, like, talent flows in your veins. How you feeling today, man? Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'm doing all right, man. Just just plugging along, taking it day by day, you know. It's been a crazy year, but uh, how you I'm still, how, still here. I'm surviving so far, so. Good. How, yeah. how you been um, maintaining during quarantine? What you been up to? Well, you know, just, you know, trying, trying to stay positive and, you know, go, going up and down with, you know, being depressed about the state of the world and state of America and, you know, but, you know, trying, trying to stay hopeful because I think that's important at the same time, you know, feel the pain, feel the hope, you know, feel, feel all the feelings. So, but, you know, just hanging, working on music, uh, not doing any gigs. I've got a couple things coming up, like outdoor events. But um, this year, like pretty much like gigs and touring, like all that ground to a halt. So, right. you know, I've been I've been writing and recording and um, working on stuff like that. So so that's been cool. Awesome, man. Like, and like I said, man, you're a hell of a songwriter, hell of a instrumentalist like you play. I think you play damn near anything that you put your hand on. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. Are you self-taught? Did you uh, teach yourself how to play everything? Yeah. For, so for the most part, um, I was in drumline in high school. Okay. So um, I I can read like drum music, and I did I did take a few piano lessons and a few guitar lessons, but um, the pattern that would happen with that was. Uh, I would take a few lessons and then I would get impatient and just be like, well, all I need to do is hear the song and then I can figure it out. Cause like, I, I, I can just figure stuff out by ear. So I would get impatient and just be like, I'm done with lessons. <laughs> so you so you pretty much pulled a Nick Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drumline three, Star Stimulator Jones coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious, man. Yeah. Hey, bro. So, so, so you, you, you're from Roanoke, Virginia, which completely threw me off left field because I'm like, like first, first of all, I don't know anybody from Roanoke, and then like your style doesn't say Roanoke, so it, it's yeah. like it, it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> seem like you, you're from some place called Roanoke, Virginia. I'm sure it's a dope place. Like, what, what, what is it like in Roanoke, man? Man, yeah. I mean, you, you're right. I mean, there's not much here, like as far as. Uh, the kind of music I like and the, and the kind of music I make, you know, there's not, there's not a big audience for it or many outlets for it here, but yeah, this, this is where I was born and raised and uh, I've lived, I've traveled around a lot, but this has been home base for the majority of my life. And it's cool. Cause it's, it's really cheap to live here. You know, it's in the mountains. It's very beautiful. You know, I'm, I like being outside and nature and stuff. So it's cool for me and um, I can just chill and, and hang out in the studio and, and work on my art and not be bothered. You know, it's it's a it's a place where I can just kind of lay back and and do my thing and, and get by easily. And then when I need to roll out, go on tour or travel, I go out and do that. And and then I come back. So. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's cheap to live here until you blow up and then everybody want to move there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Roanoke, man. So, so what, what, is, what is there to fun to do in Roanoke? Like, what is there to do? Oh, man. Well, like I said, there's, um, if you're into like outdoorsy type stuff, okay. there's like, you know, lots of hiking spots and awesome. trails, like bike trails and stuff like that. So I like to do stuff like that from time to time. And then, uh, there's lots of good thrift stores. I go thrifting all the time. And um, there's there's actually a lot of um, talented musicians and, and interesting people here, but they're, they're kind of like below the surface. Yeah. And uh, But I know a lot of cool people here. And um, so, you know. Yeah, that's cool because like, since you're from Roanoke, like pretty much like you're, you're, you're the next hope out of that city. Cause I'm sure you're still cool with all the people you went to school with. Like they still look up to you. Like you got people that you know in your whole some life. Scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some do. Awesome. 
And, and like I, I, I see your throwback pictures are hilarious, by the way. Oh man, <laughs> yes, hilarious. Yeah, there. You know, there, there was a, a period where I was embarrassed about my my <laughs> appearance, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, fuck it, like just own it and and yeah it is hilarious and it's awesome and it's, you know it's hilarious because I, I see your basketball picture with you with your converse is on there. yeah yeah <laughs> you don't look nothing like you did as a kid like now like you just like you, i don't know it's just like it's not a bad thing but i'm like i wouldn't look at this kid and be like yo this is stimulated Jones. like you just look like a, a regular kid that just played all day and he was raised by by a good family like, you look like an awesome kid so i mean it's, it's really nothing bad about your throwbacks. It's just hilarious because like, you look back and it's like, ah, oh, because that's how I look at my pictures. Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck, that's what I look like. I wear it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man, I was I was just a chubby little weirdo kid that was like real into <laughs> video games and stuff. And then eventually I got obsessed with music and, and that just like took over my life. And, you know, and, and here we I, are. I <laughs> I noticed like your choice in music was more towards the R&B hip hop genre. So what made you lean towards that instead of leaning towards, you know, a rock or, or country or something like that? I don't know what, what was based well, on. Uh, well, well, I, I've touched on a lot of that. Like, you know, I was, I was in a rock band, still, still play that kind of music. Okay. I like some country, you know, I, really I'm into, I'm into like all types of music. Cause um, yes. Uh, really, that all starts with my dad, because um, my dad, growing up, he he had a huge CD and record collection, and um, that spanned like so many genres. He was just into all types of stuff, and so that's the kind of environment I was raised in, where like, on you know, we he had his stereo in the living room, and all day he'd be playing different albums, and it, you know, it'd be like you know, classic rock, like the Stones and Zeppelin and The Who and all that stuff. And then James Brown and P-Funk and Otis Redding yeah. and Wilson Pickett. And so, you know, it, it, it was, it was, it just was normal to me to, to listen to all types of music. Like, exactly. you um, don't put yourself in a box. No, no, definitely not. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, I only like rock or I only like jazz or you know but the way I was raised it was just like you listen to everything and then later when I got older I worked at a record store and uh you had you, to to get that job you had to have knowledge about all types of music and um and then when I started making beats and DJing look going looking for samples and drum breaks and stuff there's beats and samples on all types of records, like rock exactly. records, jazz records, you know, easy listening records. So exactly. you, it just, you know, it, it's always been a thing where I've just, m music is universal to me. So I'm just, I'm into everything, but, but yeah, you know, to answer your question about uh, why I got into R&B and funk and that type of stuff. Like I said, my dad, like one of my earliest musical memories is my dad playing a James Brown CD on, on the stereo. And I was probably like four, four years old or something. And I, I remember like hearing James Brown screaming. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. And, I'm, and I was just, it was, it was like one of the first th things where I specifically was like, dad, who is this? Like, yeah. what is this guy's name? And he was like, it's James Brown. And yeah. and that stuck with me. I was like, I love this guy because like when when I heard just that energy and that mm -hmm. and and the way like the the just the feel of the music, it 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 was like sticking your finger in an electrical socket. It was like, yes, yes, I'm, I'm into this. And and James so, is going, yeah. James is going to holler on the entire yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, man. He's scream. especially like. Yeah. Like a little kid, you know, being a little kid, of course, I'm yeah. like, yes, somebody just screaming and hollering at the top of their lungs. I'm, I'm real into this, you know. <laughs> Man, and, and and that that right there, like, I can see. This is what this is why I appreciate you because you seem like like music flows through your body. Like you, pretty much have studied 
the game, you know your history on it, and you let it influence you. So like it's, it's people I could tell who skip pages in, in their book. Like you skip chapters, like you you just skip this and now you're on to this and now it doesn't feel genuine. But with you, when I hear your music, I'm like, yo, I, I feel this. Okay. I like the, the beats, the sound, like you have a very vintage sound. Is that it, are your influence the reason why you went with the more, you know, retro sound? Yeah. First of all, thank you. Yeah. That that makes me feel good to to hear what you just said. But um yeah, I mean, honestly, so to be honest, I'm getting vintage myself. I'm I'm 35 years old. Okay. So, you know, people always say that I'm a 90s throwback artist. Well, technically I am. I kind of am a 90s artist cuz like you are. <laughs> I got started I got started young and by so really like 95, 96. Yeah. I was already like starting to make recordings on like four track cassette recorders in my garage and stuff. So yeah, like I'm I'm old school to the bone. Like that's my favorite type of music is like old old school music. So same here, bro. So yeah. So like yeah, when it when it got time for me to like, you know, try and write songs and and form bands and make my own albums, that you know, all that stuff was what inspired me. And so I basically I've always just tried to like make a, a kind of record where a DJ could put on my song like in between an old record yeah. and you might and you might not be able to like know the difference. Exactly. You exactly. know what I mean? Like yeah. like that was my goal. So man, and it's like talented bro. And what I, I should have asked this at the beginning of the interview. What where did the name Stimulator Jones come from? <laughs> well Jones is my middle name. Okay. Uh, and then stimulator it was a name somebody else gave me um you know from that tradition of you don't choose your own nickname you know like i was hanging with my friend one time and we were we were just chilling smoking weed and and talking having crazy conversations about who knows what and then all of a sudden he was like i'm gonna start calling you the stimulator (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and I don't know why, but it stuck with me. And then, and then somehow I got the idea to put stimulator with, with my, my middle name, stimulator Jones. And it, you know, it just sounded cool. It sounded like a, a movie character or something. So I was like, yeah, I'm, let's go with that. It, it does sound like a movie character. Like you, you just bust the wall. I'm here to stimulate you. Bitch. Like, yeah, you <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a, that's a clever name. Like I, th- I think it fits you, Stimulator Jones. I, I listen to you. I put you on. Well, actually, one of my good friends in comedy put me on to you. His name is Ronnie. He's like, bro, you gotta hear this dude, man. He, like this shit is like classic. The way he comes on the track, his vocals, everything. Like, and I listen to. I'm like me. I'm. I really don't like new music. I'm trying to get out of that box where I can listen to new music. But I gave you a chance, and I, I put it on. I'm like, okay, okay, I can dig it. I can dig it. Cause um, yes. you, seen, you seen that movie Man, Semi Pro with uh, Will Ferrell? Yeah, yeah. It's kind it, like you have a love me sexy type. Of, <laughs> type yeah, of yeah. <laughs> yes, I like it. Like yes. I, I love that song. I'm like, okay, I can I can dig it. I can dig it. So I checked you out, listened to the whole album, listened to the, the, the outtakes, and like, bro, like, you're, you're you're fucking amazing. Like what? And you are you also are signed to what Stones Throw? That's yeah. that's your label. Yeah, so, yeah. So how do, how does it feel to be on that um, on that label? With they have a history of Jay Dilla and MF Doom and everything, like everybody that's kind of not normal, per se. Right. So how does it feel to be on there with them? Well, it's it's crazy. It it when it ha- when it all happened, it was like, what is this really happening? Because like I can go back to like 1999, mm-hmm. where I'm. I'm sitting up in my bedroom on my boombox listening to a Peanut Butter Wolf CD, and like <laughs> you know, and there was this there was this rapper uh, named Rasco that was one of the first releases on Stone's Throw, and so so like I was a Stone's Throw fan since I was like 14 years old. Now you signed him, and yeah, yeah. So Man. so that was crazy, but but I'll tell you at the same time. 
And I don't, I don't mean to sound cocky or arrogant, but I believe, I believed in myself and in my music. And I knew that I was good enough to get signed to a label like Stone's Throw. So when it happened, it felt like, yes, this, this is a good fit. This feels right. At the same, at the same time, you know? So it's like, oh my God, this is insane. Like, yeah. Like you were saying, like to be on the same label as like Dilla, Mad Lib, yeah. you know, Mad Villain, like and and Anderson Pac's on there too, it's right? Insane. Who? Anderson Pop, is he on there too? Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Wow. And and yeah. like he stands out of his own mind. So like they they know how to pick talent that like are not similar. Like y'all, you stand out, Anderson stands out, MF Doom stands out. So I'm like, yo, like y'all have a wide range of talent on that on that label. Y'all are like a, a low key, like a threat. Y'all are a threat. Like when people, <laughs> when y'all get out there, like it's gonna be a problem, dude. Cause you, your songwriting is like, you, and you write, you write all your songs, you do all the production, you do everything. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, so yeah what, that's. What's, what's, what's your writing process? Like, how does that go? Um, It's, it, it's different, Uh, like for different songs. It, it's never like, the same way every time but uh sometimes it'll start with a title mm -hmm. i'll just have or a little phrase and, and i'll think oh, and i'll kind of write around that or sometimes i'll just have nothing and i just sit there with the pen in my hand i i, I still use a, a pen and paper or pencil and paper i don't i don't write on the computer or the phone very much sometimes i do but i i like to have that feeling of i understand writing handwriting so sometimes i'll just sit there and and try and clear my head and see what comes and uh another thing i do sometimes is i'll put on a beat that i'm trying to write for you know or a piece of music that i'm trying to write for and i'll just start freestyle singing like gibberish like okay. just like sounds like <laughs> you know like yeah just like sounds and syllables. And then if I hit something that sounded cool or a little melody or something, and I'll, then I'll say, oh, okay, now what are some words that, I, actual words that I could put that would fit there? So um, so it, it's, it's different ways, but uh, I, I, I try to, I try to mix it up and, and have, uh, not not to where it's not like, well, I, I wanted to write a song about um, trees. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not like that specific. Sometimes I'll just, the words will just come and I don't know, I don't know what they mean or, or what the song's about. And it, it doesn't matter. You, I, I try to just kind of channel you know the the words and just let them let them come through me sometimes so it's 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 just different uh for each for each song and like i said some songs i'll be like i'll know exactly what i want to write about and it and it will be about a specific person or or situation yeah. you know but uh i gen i will say that i generally like will start with a piece of music first Okay. I, I don't I don't I don't usually like have the words first. I usually have a piece of music that I write the words to. Okay. Most most often, yeah. Because everybody's writing process is different. Like hey, you say you you start off with a title yeah. and hum something like okay, that's perfect. I'm yeah. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. So that, does being an instrumentalist and being a producer and everything does that um, pressure you into making something new all the time? Um, yeah, it, 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 it can be pressuring sometimes because, uh, I feel, I feel best when I'm being productive. So like, that's when I feel most happy and fulfilled. So it is important that I try to, you know, stay creating and stay working on my craft. But, um, you know, I find it important to step back sometimes and recharge and then then you can come back to the music refreshed so sometimes i have to do that too 
Got you. Okay. Um, what what influenced your your um, vocal tone choice? Like, because I I like I listen to your vocals. Like, so who pretty much is like you listen to? He's like, you know what? This is the tone of voice I want to sing in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to this. Like, who influenced that? Um. So with the with the Stimulator Jones album, when I was making it, the the main vocalist I was I was trying to go for is like that I was inspired by as, as far as my tones. Um, definitely Keith Sweat, definitely um, Aaron Hall. Oh man. Definitely, um, sorry to say, R. Kelly. <laughs> you ain't gotta say sorry, hey. Yeah, I mean. Hey, we, hey we, we're fans of R. Kelly, not Robert. We don't know who Robert is. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> perfectly put, perfectly put. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah those those were the big ones that okay. that i was i was trying to go for um and then also uh female vocalists like yvette michelle i like her a lot okay mary j um i see so you you love so, the legends man you you, you pretty much yeah yeah <laughs> I, I I could dig it. You said Aaron Hall. I'm a big Aaron Hall fan. So I'm like, yo, I, I love Aaron. Incredible, incredible singer. Man, that yo. that first that first guy album is that's one of my favorite records, man. Man, with with Timmy, with Timothy Gatlin and Teddy, and it, that was a great album. That there really was, and the one after that, the future, man. But me, but yeah, I, I, that, that was good too. Man, so you, you you know your shit, man. I, yeah, I, I'm more of a fan. I'm more of a fan now like, than anything, dude. <laughs> shit, uh, man. And then um, I, I followed the Instagram page, and I um, I, I caught one of your performances of, of "Need Your Body" on the rooftop of Stone's Throw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And how how was that? Like you on the top of a building in L.A., your kid from Roanoke. You like you know what? I'm about, <laughs> I'm about to be on top of a building singing one of my songs. Yeah. Like, how was that? It was kind of weird, but uh, but it was <laughs> fuck, it was fucking cool at the same time. Um, but uh, it, you know, you can see in the video, it's just it's literally just me and a microphone. Yeah. There's no band. I don't have any instruments, so I'm I'm basically just like doing karaoke on, on this rooftop. <laughs> so uh, you know, it it took a few takes for me to like get the vibe and get the energy, but. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the end, I I wasn't sure like how it really turned out until I until the video got edited and I saw it and I was like, okay, that's that's not that bad. Like, um, I I was I was happy with it, but ult ultimately the label did not uh, officially release that video at the time because mm. that that was actually filmed in 2017. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So that man. was before the Ultimate. album came out. Right. Right. Okay. Damn, but it's okay. it kind of it, it's it's kind of leaked out here recently, and um, gotten, yeah. I've gotten good feedback on it. So you, maybe, you it like, like, maybe it should maybe it should have came out a few years ago. You know. You <laughs> like, like fuck it. I might as well repost this. It's already. Out. Yeah. 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 It, it, it looked badass to me. The videography was great. I'm like, yo, this is like. This is dope. Like he's on the rooftop. Like now that I know the backstory that you had to get kind of into it is it's kind of how I am now when it comes to performing uh, in front of quarantine crowds in front of two, maybe three people. So I'm like, ah, I need to, I miss the sold out <laughs> crowds. I miss all that. So it's 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 definitely a challenge. But I it looked badass, dude, and from my point of view. So um Thank you. Thank you, man. Glad you so, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, man. <laughs> um but Moving moving forward, I know also you were a DJ. You brought that up earlier, and I did um, know that. How did you get into DJing? Yeah, so um, I guess really uh, I can go all the way back to like being a little kid in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents they gave me a little Fisher Price turntable and some records when I was little, and uh, and then eventually they they bought me my own like boombox. And uh, so when I was little, I would I would make little like radio shows uh, <laughs> where I would yeah, I would have like two boom boxes set up and like <laughs> press record on one and then play a song on the other one. And then in between, I'd be like, 
you that was such and such by such and such blah, blah, blah. you're listening to so so that was like the beginning of it and then um when i when i started getting into hip-hop and stuff like seeing seeing people scratch records and stuff that was always like man that's fucking cool i want to be able to do that so um i would i would try and like scratch on my dad's turntable but it, it was a belt drive so like you would go scratch and then yeah. let the record go yeah and it would be like slow to, to like start back up so <laughs> I, I later learned that you have to have a direct drive turntable. So when you scratch it and then you you let it go, yeah. the motor and the turntable is strong enough to where it, it it goes right along like at normal speed. But um, yeah, when and then when so when I was in like sixth grade, my friends started asking me to DJ birthday parties and stuff. Yeah, and um, uh, I would use like I had like a a Walkman and a boombox plugged into a guitar amp and I would like play one song on the on one and then play another song on the other like I didn't even have a mixer for some of those gigs and then uh uh I remember there was a couple there was a couple times where I, I rented a turntable and I would like do some scratching and then um as as later in high school I actually like got a Techniques 1200 like nice turntable you know, would practice scratching all the time, like most days after school. And um, so it's it's always been something I've been into. And uh, la then later I, I would, you know, DJ parties and um, some gigs at like clubs and restaurants in the area. And then, um, I've, I have done like some DJ gigs, like as Stimulator Jones, like gigs where I don't like perform my songs per se. I, I just like, you know, do DJ sets. And okay. I love doing, I, I love doing that um, because uh, I'm always digging for cool old records to, to try and turn people onto. And th that's like, that's how I, because I don't know about you, but for me, when I hear a DJ, I want to hear songs that I've never heard before. I want yeah. to hear songs where I have no idea who they are. And it makes me be like, oh, damn, what is that? Like, who, I mean, I, like, what's that record? I'll be in the club but, with Shazam on, like, hey. They yeah. Like, now. I'm like, just mind your business. I'm going to listen to this later. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It's like, to me, that's, that's a DJ's job is to, like, turn people on to stuff that they weren't hip to before. But, you know, sadly, well, I don't know. It's different strokes. There's a lot of people out there, they just want familiarity. They, they want to hear stuff that they, the they can sing along they to. The they, they already know what it is, you know. But The same shit they hear on the radio all day, every day. I know. And, and to me, I'm like, I don't get that. But, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I'm, then, not gonna, and then, I'm not going to hate. <laughs> but then by the time the song is like fully in swing, they're already tired of it. And then they don't want to hear it no more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's me, why I, you know, I'm always looking for stuff that that I've never heard before. So as a DJ, that's what I try to do is like, you know. Now, now, trust me, I've done wedding gigs and uh, mm -hmm. you know Christmas parties and gigs where I had to play like top forty radio hits and yeah, the money's good, but you, it's you not very fun, man. <laughs> You, you made it work. You was like, hey, I'm getting paid to be here. I'm gonna yeah, play, yeah. I'm going to play all this. You can get it, whatever. But to me, yeah. like music, I love music so much. Like to me, music has to have like a, a, a replay value to me. I, it, I, if I if I like this, if I like your music today, like 10 years down the line, I want to put your stuff in and I'd be like, this shit still sounds rocking like it did when I first heard it. 100%. That's how I am. Yes. I, I listened to The Chronic the other day. And I'm like, yo, this shit still slaps. And how I yeah. work, I listen to The Chronic and then I listen to everybody Dr. Dre sample for that album. And I go play that. And I'm like, yo, now I'm a fan of, you know, Leo Mayfield. I'm a fan of all these people. So I'm like, yo, he put me on to something new. I'm happy. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
So you look like the guy that'll listen to a song and then be like, yo, I'm gonna go check the sample out. Now I'm a fan of this guy and I'm gonna just do my research and keep going Man, back and back and back. I'm, because totally. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because like I was talking earlier about um, when I, so when I got into hip hop and then I, I figured out like where they were getting all their beats and all their music, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, so they're like sampling old funk and jazz yeah. and soul records and, and rock records and stuff. So I started like, I would look in like CD liner notes and be like, you know, it, it yeah. would say like, what's what song they sampled? And I would try and like track down those artists and stuff. And man, I, I got turned on to a lot of good music um, by doing that. And so, yeah, I, I totally am one of, one of those kinds of people. They're, they're making it harder because you know they're not selling CDs no more. So now, like, you got to just find the notes on. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, there's not a booklet. There's like, they're not telling me anything about who wrote the song. Like, I, I, now you got to really dig deep for the music. But also, like, the music industry is kind of they're trying to find their way of being, you know, lucrative for the artists because you know it's, some music is on title, some music is on. Uh, iTunes, like you can't find music everywhere where you want it. You got to have three or four subscriptions to something to have all the right. music you want. So you're you're streaming on everything, right? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I have YouTube Music. You're you're on YouTube Music, so that's okay. That's good. So I believe you're on iTunes also because my boy Ronnie has iTunes. So okay, cool. So just make it like just making sure like you're everywhere because I'm definitely shout you out. Tell people to come follow you. Everything, dude. It's, fucking awesome i uh, appreciate you man thank you so much love it so uh we gonna um you have an album and you have an outtakes album what made you break those up into two different albums um so some of those songs on the outtakes album mm -hmm. got cut for um album length reasons because uh we had to make so the, the album, Exotic Worlds and Masterful Treasures, mm -hmm. we wanted that to fit on one record. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in order to make that work, I had to cut a couple tracks. Mm -hmm. so, um, so then I, I, I had those and a few other songs I had left over. And, and we, we put that Exotic Outtakes EP out um, before I went on tour in October, 2018. That, that was like the big reason we put that EP out was like to, you know, have a, a new little thing like for the tour. Okay. So, so yeah, the songs on there, uh, basically either I just had kind of had them in my vault and didn't know where to put them or a couple of them were originally going to be on the album, but they got cut uh, for, um, you know, just to shorten the album length to where it would fit on one record. Okay, because um, I heard something about the uh, musicians and albums. Like, if you have over a certain amount of songs, do they charge you like for for that? Um, well, the the reason we did it is because uh, uh, if if I'd had the album a certain length, we would have had to split it on two records, and so oh, the album. Okay. Yeah, so the album would have been a two LP set, and that is much more expensive to manufacture and then would therefore cost more for you know retail price mm -hmm. so just to keep costs down we were like we, let's let's shave a couple of tracks off and just to keep it one record okay okay yeah. so you got um of course uh, exotic worlds and masterful treasures what inspired the the, the album title um that is actually from the uh the mike tyson uh broadway spoken word thing uh uh, uh yeah I, yeah when he went on tour telling the yeah, story about I, oh, what what oh, i'm i'm forgetting the name of the me too i know what you're talking about it was directed by spike lee yes have have you seen it i, I have i've seen bits and pieces of it I haven't sat it's, down and watched it it's actually surprisingly good let me let me see what the title of that is mike tyson Broadway, so bam. Yeah, people was uh, uh, the undisputed truth. Undisputed, yeah, undisputed truth. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So the, there's this one part. In, uh, there's this one part in there where he's talking about his relationship with Robin Givens, and he he said something, 
some about the promises of exotic worlds and masterful treasures. And, and I was watching it and I was just like, ooh, that's good. And so I wrote that down <laughs> and then I was like, that's my album title, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's hilarious! Now every time I read your album title, I'm gonna say like like exotic world. <laughs> <laughs> I have to now because not even told me the story. So that's so like, good. I love it. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck it up. So now, and man, and, and like I said, dude, this is a solid album. Like I love Water Slide. I love, of course, Need Your Body, but but the one that stood out to me was Soon Never Comes. The way that song comes on, dude, you you did your damn thing with that, bro. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's like, so that's my most popular song. Okay. And um, that, that's actually the song that got me my record deal. So it never comes? Um, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, because so uh, what happened was, um, so there's this DJ named Sophie Fatorecci. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, she's, a, she's a DJ and artist. Uh, used to work with Stone's Throw, used to work with uh, Boiler Room. Mm -hmm. that they, they broadcast like uh, videos of DJ sets and stuff. Um, she's, she's a really great DJ. And she reached out to me kind of out of nowhere uh, and sent me a message and was like, hey, what's your email address? And so gave her my email. And then she emailed me and said, uh, hey, I'm putting out a compilation on Stone Star Records. Would you like to submit some music like for possible inclusion? And I was like, hell yeah. So I got together a folder of a bunch of music I had on my computer, uh -huh. sent it to her. And then later I heard back and she was like, yeah, I love Soon Never Comes. And, and uh, there was a couple other, there was like one other like instrumental beat track that she was going to put on there she ended up just putting soon never comes on the compilation uh which came out on stone's throw in 20 uh i think it came out 2016 it's called sophie's sos tape okay because yeah because she had this radio show called sos radio so so soon never comes was on that compilation on stone's throw in 2016 and then uh but but so to back up a little bit in in 2015 after i had like submitted her the music and stuff and she, you know she chose soon never comes to be on the compilation eventually i got an email where it was like from her and she had cc'd uh peanut butter wolf who is the owner of stone's throw and you know legendary dj and, and and she was like hey i just want to introduce you guys peanut butter wolf to you know meet stimulator jones and i was like oh my god i was like low-key fanboying out like oh my god I'm, I'm emailing with peanut butter wolf and he so he he messaged me and was like hey man nice to meet you i love your music looking forward to working with you on the compilation and and possibly some other stuff in the future and i and i was like oh my god Man. so so yeah so so basically just like on the strength of that song he he liked it peanut butter wolf the owner of stone's throw liked it enough to where he was interested in like uh putting more of my music out and so i i ended up flying out to la meeting him and all the other Stones Throw people, and we hit it off well, and uh, we agreed to work with each other. So um, awesome! Yeah, yeah, and and so like all of that happened off really off the strength of uh, Soon Never Comes. And and I, and I noticed most of your songs, like well, you damn your whole album, you you have no features. Is that a way you prefer to work? Um, I'm not opposed to features, but. Mm -hmm. uh, this it's just kind of how it ended up being and okay. on, on my my next album that i'm working on there there will be some features but but you know now that you mention it i think i did for this one i wanted it to just be like um a, basically a solo effort and just be like look here here's what i can do like exactly. on my own. like 
Exactly. You pulled you pulled yeah. a J. Cole uh, platinum with no features. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My man, hey bro, like I said, man, I love you work. So I can't I can't wait for the next one. Do uh, you, you have a date for that one coming out? Yeah. Well, so I've got a couple instrumental projects coming out. Okay. Um, so I've got I've got one album that's it's actually got a um like jazz and instrumental funk fusion kind of vibe to it and that's coming out on this label mutual intentions which is based out of oslo norway okay really cool really cool label um so that's coming out either at the end of this year or the start of 2021 okay and then i've and then i've got a beat tape instrumental just straight up hip-hop beats coming out on stone's throw Dope. um like first first quarter of 2021 and then my like my vocal album you know the follow-up to exotic worlds and masterful treasures will be coming out hopefully at the end of 2021 so okay okay so yeah so you pretty much give your give your work a little gap between you know i'm gonna drop yeah 18 and 2021 sometime i'll drop the next one Right. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Yeah. You don't want to put out too much at one time and then people get tired of you. And then, you know, I understand. And a lot of people work at their own pace. Like it, that's how you make quality music is quality or quantity. So I, I appreciate you. Yeah. That. Yeah. And, so, and starving me, man. Come on. Like, <laughs> damn, bro. Like, well, I hope it'll, I hope it'll be worth the wait. You, you said 2021. I was like, January. Come on, January. You was like, 2020. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Okay. Okay. I'll but, take uh, it. it it, it might, I got a lot of songs for it. So okay. it might end up being a double album. So okay. in that case, it would be uh, like, you know, uh, it would, I'm, it would, I'm happy. It would be worth the wait in, in that case. I'm, so. I'm happy again. You easy. You <laughs> the wound. Okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> man, well, um, I, I appreciate you for doing this interview with me, man. Shit. If you, uh, like I said, you ever come to Atlanta, do a show. I'm, I'm there front row, dude. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great to meet you, man. And, um, man. I, I checked out some of your your comedy clips. And, oh man, and it was good shit. I like it, man. Hey, and I, I love. Um, I, I have a, a ton of respect for stand up comics because I know that that shit's not easy to do. And not, like, man. like as a musician, I get up there and I've I've got instruments and music to yeah. kind of hide behind. But when you're just up there with nothing but you and your voice, like. I know that shit's hard. So when I, when I stop I, talking, I, that's when the booze come. When you stop talking, the booze start happening. You're like, damn. <laughs> you, you got songs you can fall back on. Like if you started doing stand up, right, right. it was like, uh, okay, play Need Your Body. Hurry up before they stop. Yeah, going. yeah. <laughs> You're good, man. Could, could you see yourself doing stand up? I don't know, man. Some, sometimes I, I, I imagine it. I, I think about it because. Um, I'm I'm a I'm a fan of the art form. I love comedy, but um uh for for now I'm I'm gonna stick to music. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I ask history? you what, what what's what's your uh so you tell me yours and I'll tell you mine. What what is your all-time favorite uh stand-up comedy special? Damn, oh man. If you, you have got, one. You got like I, I can give you two. Okay. Of course, Delirious by Eddie. Yes. See that that's that's number that's a close number two for me. That one and then like for some reason killing me softly by Chappelle. That one. That's a good one. That's that a one. good one. Also, Chris Rock's like special is also like they're up there with me too. Like I love yeah, Chris Rock. Definitely. That, that's, Man, that's, my, my influence. Uh, that's definitely my influence. The one the one I always come back to is uh Martin Lawrence, you so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh, incredible. You're, you're, like, you're sitting there and just looking at your dick, just um, you're just like you want to beat your dick, but you just uh, and you, like, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like I love Martin. Dude. It's so fucking funny, man. And he and like his energy level throughout the whole thing is just like on eleven. It's but, like it's 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 an amazing performance. But imagine performing that in all leather. I know that too. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Martin, like you don't perform in all leather, would you? Though? 
I know. Maybe I should. <laughs> that means you're great. That means you're great. I gotta get anybody on that. that. <laughs> anybody to put on all leather, like you, you're destined to be great. You're gonna take off. <laughs> take off, definitely, bro. But man, yeah, definitely, man. We gonna just come to my shows, come to yours. But I'm gonna support either way, man. You're a talented dude. Like, I love your instrument, your instruments. I love your your vocals. Like you gonna you gonna blow. Trust me. Thank you, man. Make sure you man. Blow. I, you I, shit, shit man, I it, it makes me happy. Like to hear that you, that you like my shit. Cause yeah. like, I mean, you say like, you mostly listen to old music yes. and that's how I am too. So I know you got high standards. So Very. That, like that, it, it makes me happy that, that you heard my music and you were like, okay, I'll fuck with that. Yeah. I, I tell people, I'm like, look, I don't listen to new music, but he's one of my favorite new music artists. So definitely I'm gonna I'm shoot your music. I'm gonna post your album. Yeah. And of course in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this and let everybody know who Stimulator Jones is definitely man. That, that makes me happy as hell, brother. I appreciate man. that. So don't hang up after this. Just I'm gonna close it out. I'm gonna close it. Okay. Out. All right. Cool. <laughs> now, I would sing if I could, but you know I'm just talking regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This is this has been a dope interview, Stimulator. I appreciate you for doing this with me, man. Um, definitely. My if pleasure, people, man. People want to hear a part two. We'll do a part two. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most definitely. So, oh man, this has been the Love the Laugh podcast with Stimulator Jones is my musical guest. Make sure you check him out. Matter of fact, tell the people where you can find you at on social media, man. Uh, yeah, so Instagram, at Stimulator Jones. Twitter, at Stimulator Jones. Okay. Um, I don't really mess with Facebook too much. So nice. those, those are your best bets. Okay. But yeah, check me out. Awesome, man. Thank y'all so much, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. This has been the Love the Laugh podcast. I am Marlon Ballard. Peace.